How y'all doing, fam? Welcome to the show. I'm Maurice Mazdu, photographer, and today I want to discuss my somewhat cheap, incredibly small, seriously practical black and white darkroom setup. Let's go. First off, it's Mother's Day. It's coming up soon. It's in like two days from the time that I'm recording this. If you haven't already, turn me off and go get something for your mom. She spent time with you. She took care of you. She fed you when she didn't have to. Well, I guess she did have to technically. That's child abuse. You understand what I'm saying? Go do something for your mother. You, She deserves it. Take care of her, right? Moving on. I wanna take this all the way from film canister to the print, and I'm gonna show you each of the pieces of the darkroom that I use. I kinda of wanna show you how I use it, talk about it for a second, and then talk about the cost. First, let's look at the whole setup. This is the Essex rolling cart from Michaels. Me and my wife were walking around Michaels and I kind of wanted something that I could put my enlarger on and we ended up finding this cart for $40. It's a really good cart, it's all metal. I really like it because it fits everything that I could possibly need for a darkroom setup onto it itself. I also like it because it expands and it fits nicely inside a very small bathroom, which is where I do all of my darkroom stuff. Of course, because the cart has wheels, I can roll it anywhere and it really works out a lot. So with the tray out of the way, let's talk about some of the other pieces. The first thing you'll need is some type of changing box or changing bag. This is my changing box that I found and I really like it. So my changing box is great. It's actually not that large. Here goes the actual size of it right here. And one of the reasons that I like it is because I have very, very big hands. I'm 6'2", 220 pounds. So I need a lot of room in there. Not that changing bags don't have a lot of room. I just like the room that that offers and I can set up everything inside exactly how I want it to be. I wanna say thank you to the people at Southeastern Camera in Raleigh. That's where I got this box. This is a great little place. He has all types of stuff in there and I'm really glad that he had this box. Although it does have a couple of light leaks. As you can see, I had to put some duct tape on some things, but that's okay. While I was in the army, we learned that duct tape fixes literally everything. I've seen tanks put together with duct tape. So believe it or not, these are really hard to find. I looked on eBay to see if I could find any and I couldn't find any at all. There were maybe two of them, but they're around the $250 range. I think that's entirely too much to pay for this thing. Find a changing bag for between $15 and $30. Let's move on. So once you have a place to pull the film out of the canister, then you need to put it into something so that it can get chemicals. And for that, I use the standard Patterson changing tank. I have the double tank that fits two 35 millimeter rolls. This is pretty much the standard if you wanna put some chemicals inside and it stays light proof, that's why I like it a lot. You can change the spools from 35 millimeter to 120 millimeter pretty easily. You can change it from 35 to 120. Let me show you. You just turn the, turn the, hold on. You just turn the, turn the thing and then, you just turn the thing and then, then you have it at, at the 120 side. You, you understand it. The beauty of a Patterson tank is that you can put the film inside, put it on the spools, and then once you put the first top on, that first top keeps it light tight, so you can pour chemicals both inside and out without it ever being exposed to light. I've done all of my home developing in this tank starting in 2018. You can find these tanks used for about $20, but you can get a new one for about 30. I suggest you get a new one. Next, I'm gonna talk about the Anova sous vide machine. I understand how weird that sounds. There is nothing better than a sous vide steak. It maintains a temperature, but it stays so juicy, and it maintains that temperature by keeping the water at a certain temperature. In this instance, it also keeps the temperature of your photochemicals at the exact temperature that they need to be. Of course, you could do a hot water bath. You could try your best to find the right temperature, hope it doesn't get too hot, and then you can drop your chemicals inside their little tubs into the bath, and that's a slow way for them to warm up. So you don't actually have to have this Anova sous vide machine. I just think that it's a good addition to any home development that you're gonna be doing, and the Anova sous vide machine costs $99. Since that's really all you need to do with film, we can move on to inside the darkroom itself and we'll start talking about the Omega B22 black and white enlarger. The Omega company made the B22 enlarger from 1962 to 1974. My serial number is from about 1967. 
It can hold a negative carrier between 35 millimeters, 120 millimeters. It can also do a four by four negative carrier if you can find them, but a lot of these older ones are hard to find. They do make some new ones. I ordered a negative carrier for mine. However, it has not come from eBay yet and has been some time. So me and my wife just made one. My cardboard rig that my wife and I made works just fine and it will hold a negative in place so that I can apply light to it. It can be magnified and it can go into a print. That's exactly what I need to do, but I still anticipate the actual piece of equipment so I don't have to have something that's jerry-rigged. The enlarger came with a Nikon 50 millimeter F4 lens, which is more than sufficient for my work. I personally like a little noise and imperfection in my analog work, similar to why I like to listen to the crackles and the imperfections that are in vinyl. It can produce up to 12 and a half by 18 inch prints. That is humongous. As a matter of fact, just that is, the printed area here is 12 and a half by 18. I did it on purpose so I can see what that size is and that's incredible. I do eight by 10 work, so the B22 and larger is perfect for me because eight by 10 is the perfect size. I can do small intimate work in my small intimate bathroom however I needed to. I could point the enlarger on the floor and get whatever size print I need, right? Looking on eBay, you can find a B22 for about 120 fully working. They don't have that many parts, so they're not that hard to fix. I like it and I, I really like it. Some people considered it a toy in the serious photography world, but all I need this thing to do is apply fly light to a negative and magnify it, and it does it well. So the next thing on the list that we'll have to talk about is my Bogan Blade Adjustable 8x10 easel. It's pretty straightforward. You open it up, put paper in it, close it, and it can frame the paper for you. It works really well because you'll get a lot of, especially when you have a two by three negative and you're trying to print on an eight by 10, those two dimensions aren't congruent. So you have to crop appropriately and having experience cropping in Lightroom or Photoshop will give you all that you need. As a matter of fact, the symbol in Lightroom and Photoshop for crop is actually an easel. You could build one for yourself or you could buy one. They're not that expensive. I found mine for $20. They're about 20 to 40 on eBay. Now, to time exposure in the darkroom, I use this beast, the M59 Master Time Alight Darkroom Timer. You plug the enlarger into it and the beast controls what times you want to apply to the paper. It's pretty straightforward. I also use it to time how long the paper needs to be in photochemicals. I just turn off the enlarger, but still use the timer and it's worked pretty well for me. So the Beast is great. I love this thing. I love that it's like metal and has this 50s aesthetic. I also like that this part, the dial glows in the dark so that if you need to, you can actually have all the lights off and still be able to do what you need to do. This, this thing is actually pretty amazing. It reminds me of something that my grandfather would have had. My grandfather, when I was growing up, he had this like metal thing to shine his shoes and it had these two like a uh, furry, like a red and black thing on it. I, I don't know what the thing is called. I'll see if I can find a picture. Anyway, you can find one of these online for between 14 and $24. Finally, let's talk about the Bestwell Mini Sight Grain Focusing Scope. This thing helps a lot, especially since I'm left eye blind and it's very hard for me to judge actual sharpness this thing helps out because i can just look at it see what the actual grain of the negative itself is and know that i am clinically sharp according to this thing the thing's amazing it can definitely guarantee focus on the negative but what it can't guarantee is that i focused on the damn thing correctly when i was shooting but that's neither here nor there the best well mini site is between 35 and 60 dollars on ebay to finalize your setup, you'll need a set of bamboo tongs so that you can move your prints into each tray as necessary. Those bamboo tongs cost about $10 online. You'll need some trays to put your prints into. However, I just used the drawers that came with the carrying cart that I got from Michaels and they work just fine. I, I have had no problems with them, although they don't have the little grooves in there. So I have to really fish around to get the print out, but it works fine. If you don't want to use the drawers or just want to buy your own set of trays, they cost anywhere from 20 to $40. See if you can find them used at your local photographic store. 
And for paper, I'm using this paper here, but you can use whatever paper you want. That quality depends on what you want. Do whatever you need to do. This paper costs about $25 for uh, 25 pieces. You can get some much more expensive Ilford paper or Kodak paper, really it's up to you. Just find the best paper that works for you and do what you have to do. Now, if we add everything up and we do it the right way, or at least the way I did it, you'll come out to about $384. That's really not that bad. It's $384 for the equipment if you add in the tongs and the trays and the paper. And even if you look at all of the money that you would need for photochemicals, you're coming in at about $453. But there's more. For less than $500, you can have a full dark room in your home, but you don't have to spend as, as, as much as I did, right? Like I, I, I got some extra stuff that I really didn't need. You can cut some corners and get rid of the sous vide machine. That knocks $100 off out the gate. You do not need that. You can heat up photochemicals whichever way you want to. It doesn't, you, you don't have to, I, I just like that because I'm lazy, right? Again, if you got that carrying cart, that movement cart from Michaels and you don't buy the trays, you can take $50 off right there. Finally, you don't have to get the rolling cart at all. You do not need that. All you need is a sink, maybe a piece of plywood, put it over a tub. I've, I've seen a lot of different things on YouTube. There's a lot of ways that you can do this and it not be that expensive. So yeah. That's my setup. That's my darkroom setup. It has worked out real well for me. I'll probably take you in the darkroom a couple of times after this to show you how I do prints. Maybe we'll, we'll print something out together. But yeah, that's it, man. Look, in the comments, let me know what you think. I really appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. Peace.